The film begins with a wounded man stumbled out of a building, two gunmen hot on his heels in a dark and stormy night. At that time, he frantically searched for a hiding spot, but the men were too close. Suddenly, he ducked under a parked truck, hoping to evade their grasp. But his hiding spot was short-lived as the gunmen soon found him. Desperate to escape, the wounded man sprinted towards the highway, but his fate was sealed as a speeding sedan collided with him. He was rushed to a hospital in Seoul, where he was immediately taken to the emergency room. The doctors quickly discovered that he had a gunshot wound and urged him to report it to the police. Meanwhile, in another part of the hospital, a young woman named Heeju was receiving a checkup for her pregnancy. Her husband Taejun, an ER doctor, was attending to the gunshot victim. The couple was thrilled to be expecting a baby, but their happiness was short-lived when Taejun was called back to the ER. At that time, Taejun had his hands full with a stream of patients, including a particularly difficult drunkard who pushed him to his limits. As he stumbled and fell, he caught a glimpse of the gunshot victim's room. He noticed that the doctor who had been treating the man was nowhere to be seen and grew suspicious. When Taejun investigated further, he found that the man's IV and oxygen tubes had been cut off. Quickly, he rushed to the man's aid and managed to save his life. Exhausted from the long day, Taejun couldn't shake off the feeling that something wasn't right about patient number 13. On the day after a holiday, Taejun and Heeju were enjoying their married life. Despite being busy, Taejun always made sure to care for his beloved wife. But things took a dark turn when he was attacked while coming down the stairs after changing his clothes on the second floor of their house. He felt himself slipping away, but he heard his wife calling for help as she was being kidnapped. Suddenly, Taejun's phone rang and he answered to hear his wife's panicked voice on the other end. The kidnapper demanded that he remove patient number 13 from the hospital where he worked, warning that his wife would be harmed if he failed or reported the situation to the police. At that time, Taejun was terrified and rushed to the hospital, where he found police officers on guard due to an ongoing murder investigation. The situation was complicated, but Taejun knew he had to act quickly. Soon after, when a female detective captain named Yongju arrived, Taejun was hesitant to reveal the truth about his wife's kidnapping. He was pale and confused, but he knew he had to make a choice. As Yongju questioned him, Taejun struggled to decide whether to follow the kidnapper's orders or tell the truth. He tried to avoid answering and asked to change his clothes first. It was revealed that there had been a murder in the Myeongjin apartment area the previous night. At that time, Yongju and her colleague Jung Su were investigating the case and believed that the person they had in custody was involved. However, the suspect's phone was broken and he had no identification, making it difficult to determine his identity. Soon after, Yongju planned to return to the office to get the suspect's fingerprints. Meanwhile, Taejun was struggling to make a decision about what to do regarding his wife's kidnapping. But when he saw a photo of her, he resolved to follow the kidnapper's orders. He pretended to examine patient number 13 and insisted on taking him for a CT scan, claiming that the patient's head was injured. Jung Su was hesitant to allow a murder suspect to leave the hospital, but Taejun managed to persuade him. Unfortunately, Jung Su, Yongju, and another detective named Su Jin caught up with Taejun and the patient at the elevator. Su Jin was surprised to see that the patient was not in his room and immediately called Jung Su. However, the officer became suspicious of Taejun, who was already in a state of panic. When Jung Su moved to arrest him, Taejun attacked him and used a cardiac shock device to incapacitate him. Shortly after, two lady detectives arrived at the CCTV room after a shocking incident. They found Taejun, who was in a frenzy and told them that his wife had been kidnapped because of him. He explained that he was a murder suspect and begged for their help. The other detective, who had fainted earlier, woke up and also confirmed that Taejun was a suspect. Soon after, Su Jin hurried to the top floor, but when she got there, Taejun and the suspect had already fled. She found her colleague Jung Su, who had also fainted. Then, she immediately reported the situation to Captain Yongju. At that time, Yongju checked the CCTV footage and saw the suspect disguised as a wheelchair pusher. It turned out that Taejun also recognized the suspect. Not long after, Yongju found the suspect and tried to apprehend him, but he was very fast and agile, and even she couldn't catch him. However, the suspect, whose name was Yohun, was being chased by other people as well. He moved quickly and skillfully through the hospital, trying to escape. Soon after, Taejun chased after him but lost track of him when he saw Yohun running through the pillars on the second floor. Because of the incident, the hospital was surrounded by security guards and police who were all looking for Yohun. Despite their efforts, Yohun managed to escape. On the other hand, Heeju was still alive and being held captive. Meanwhile, Yohun got on a bus to try and contact someone who could help him. However, the phone number he had was turned off. He was determined to find out why he was involved in this big problem. Soon after, Su Jin reported the case to Captain Yongju. They learned that the victim was killed in an area with no CCTV cameras. The building where the murder occurred was neglected and was going to be auctioned off. Not long after, the detectives went to investigate the house but found it empty. At that time, Captain Yongju was furious when she found out that the general section would be taking over the case. 
Then, she went to the commander, but it was too late as the general investigators were already there. Shortly after, Captain Song Gi Chol and his team arrived and told Captain Yeon Ju that the case was a secret and there would be no further investigation. But she didn't give up and realized that the arrest warrant was missing. She and Su Jin suspected something fishy and decided to investigate the case themselves. Meanwhile, He Ju was being held captive by a disabled person who turned out to be Yo Hoon's younger brother, Baek So Hoon. On the other hand, Yo Hoon arrived home and tried to piece together what happened the night of the murder. He discovered that the victim was shot as soon as he found them, most likely to eliminate witnesses. Meanwhile, as Captain Yeon Ju arrives at the crime scene, she's determined not to let the case slip away from her division. Despite resistance from the general section, she pushes her way in and starts investigating. The scene is grim, with suspicious blood stains, bullet marks, and a lingering smell of gunpowder. It's clear that there's been a violent exchange of gunfire. On the other hand, Taejun is anxiously waiting for a call from the kidnapper. Suddenly, Sohoon asks him about the man he brought out of the hospital. Taejun explains that he couldn't take the man as he still needed medical treatment and was wearing a respirator. But the man who asked about him insists that he must have him as soon as possible. They agree to meet at the Messinet shopping mall that afternoon. The next day, Jong Su reports that the mysterious man is Baek Yo Hoon, a former Special Forces soldier and mercenary who's been operating in Southeast Asia for the past 10 years. Captain Yeon Ju is shocked by this information and warns her team not to let it get to the public investigators. She said that the people they're dealing with are not ordinary criminals, and they need to tread carefully. The stakes are high, and the tension is palpable as the investigation takes an unexpected turn. Back to Yo Hoon. As he sat in his home, his loyal dog suddenly made a noise, causing him to quickly hide in the ventilation. Meanwhile, two men were outside, discussing how the person they were after must have a connection to Baek So Hoon, the owner of the house. These were the same men who were shooting the night before, digging around for something until they were forced to move after So Hoon's cell phone was activated, revealing his location. Shortly after, Yo Hoon immediately set out after the men. Meanwhile, Tae Joon was anxiously waiting at the promised meeting place, desperately trying to reach the kidnapper of his wife. But the call was suddenly disconnected. As the two messengers made their way to the location, Yo Hoon secretly followed behind them, and suddenly So Hoon appeared behind Tae Joon, threatening him to reveal the location of his brother. After finding out about the relationship between So Hoon and the kidnapper, Tae Joon asked for more time so that he could see his wife first. Then, So Hoon fled the scene, and the two messengers gave chase. Tae Joon, however, managed to catch So Hoon, but was then attacked by the other two men who demanded to know where the hospital patient was. In a moment of desperation, So Hoon leaped recklessly from above, while the men beat Tae Joon mercilessly. Just as they were about to kill him, Yo Hoon appeared and fought the two men, freeing Tae Joon and telling him to run away. It turned out there was a misunderstanding that caused trouble for Yo Hoon, who was looking for his sister. Suddenly, two people appeared and attacked him, leaving him beaten and helpless. At that time, Yo Hoon wanted to find out what happened, but there were too many people around. So he hid and watched what was happening. That's when he saw He Ju in a bad condition, and he rushed to help her. He gave her water and made sure she was okay. He Ju, who was a psychiatrist, knew that Yo Hoon was not a bad person, even though he seemed confused. Then, she calmed him down and listened as he told her what had happened. He stammered as he explained that he was trying to protect his brother from some dangerous people who were chasing them. Yo Hoon loved his brother very much, and when their mother died, he knew he had to return to Korea to take care of him. He had been working as a mercenary, but he gave up his job to be with his brother. They were the only family they had left. Meanwhile, So Hoon worked as a courier for someone, and Yo Hoon didn't know who his brother was working for either. He only knew that So Hoon was paid to deliver documents. The next day, Yo Hoon woke up feeling dizzy, but he knew he had to leave that place. However, Tae Joon stopped him, and Yo Hoon realized he couldn't trust him anymore. Just then, Captain Yong Ju appeared with a gun, ordering Yo Hoon to surrender. Afterward, Tae Joon explained what had happened, including the fact that they were being chased by two armed men. However, Captain Yong Ju became suspicious, especially when people from the general section showed up. Not long after, Song Gi Chol and his men arrived. He had ordered them to watch Captain Yong Ju so he could come quickly if needed. Then, Captain Yong Ju told Tae Joon that his wife had been kidnapped, and the two armed men were still after him. Suddenly, So Hoon called and asked about his brother's whereabouts. When he heard Yo Hoon's voice, So Hoon was relieved and told the police what had happened. He also mentioned the gunman's location, but accidentally let it slip that Gi Chol was suspicious. Gi Chol immediately took the phone and said he would help his brother, but Captain Yong Ju was unsure of his motives. Then, as Yong Ju arrived at the crime scene, she argued that the investigation should be made public. She had never investigated a shootout before, and the tension was palpable. Hearing that, Gi Chol remained silent as the two armed men they had been pursuing earlier approached them. It turned out that, Tae Joon recognized one of them, and the situation became even more bizarre when Gi Chol suddenly shot the captain, who happened to be his own police partner. The sudden violence left everyone stunned. 
It turned out that Gichol was the mastermind behind the previous night's murder case, and the two criminals they had been chasing were actually police officers. Gichol immediately took control of the situation and set about manipulating the crime scene to make it look like Yeonju was responsible for the captain's death. He then ordered that Yeonju be killed by a suspect named Yohun, who was acting out of revenge due to the officer's negligence. To further obscure the truth, Gichol also shot his own partner in the leg as part of his fake report. This reminded Yeonju of a similar case that had happened recently in Wakanda. At that moment, Gichol's men were terrified of him, and he used his power to order them to cover up any evidence of the crime. He was willing to do anything to protect himself, even if it meant killing innocent people. As they traveled to tie up loose ends, Gichol became more and more agitated, and he eventually called a gangster named Jung Pilju. This man was notorious for his illegal activities, and he was furious that Gichol had left loose ends in the case. The murder was actually connected to a money laundering scheme between Gichol and the gangsters. It turned out that the victim of the shooting was a building owner in Korea, and the two officers who were supposed to kill him had actually set a trap for Yohun. However, Yohun's older brother had also been present, which was an unexpected complication. Now, Gichol was determined to get his 50% share, and when Yohun and Taejun were about to be killed by the corrupt officers, he fought back with his special forces training. He threatened one of the officers, demanding to know where they were holding Yohun's sister. The officer finally broke and revealed that she was being held at an old amusement park. At that time, Yohun was so angry that he nearly killed the officer, but Taejun stopped him, knowing that they couldn't afford to waste any more time. Just then, another officer arrived, and Yohun and Taejun made their escape. Soon after, they encountered two more officers, Su Jin and Jong Su, who were shocked to see their captain, Yongju, covered in blood. At that moment, Su Jin was overcome with emotion and ran after the suspects, sparking a high speed chase. Then, Yohun urged Taejun to drive faster so they could get to Yohun's sister before the police did. Meanwhile, Su Jin called for all officers to hunt down the suspects for the murder of Captain Yongju. On the other hand, Yohun and Taejun managed to evade the police at a heavy equipment site and escape to safety. Meanwhile, in an abandoned park, Sohun confesses to Heeju why he's been doing what he's been doing. He apologizes and says that he would give up everything if his brother was found. He just doesn't want to be separated from him again. Suddenly, Gichol and his troops arrive, and they receive news that the two men have escaped. Gichol orders his men to take Taejun's wife and kill Yohun's brother. Then, Heeju asks about her husband, and Gichol tells her that he's at the police station waiting for him. Soon after, two detectives take him, while Gichol takes Sohun to another location. At that moment, Heeju is suspicious about why Sohun wasn't taken with the others. It turns out that Sohun was working with gangster Jung Pilju to frame him as the murderer. But Sohun has a sudden change of heart and takes his older brother, Yohun, instead. Knowing that, Gichol is furious and tortures Sohun in a cruel way. Not long after, Taejun and Yohun arrive at the park, but they're too late. They find a body covered in blood, and it turns out to be Sohun. There, Sohun apologizes to his brother and tells that bad people took a woman away. He asks his brother to save her, and Taejun and Yohun cry upon hearing his words. Shortly after, Sohun passes away on his brother's lap. Then, his body is brought in by an ambulance and officers, and Taejun and Yohun can only watch from a distance. After all of that incident, now, they need to come up with a plan to rescue Taejun's wife and uncover why Sohun had to be killed. They realize they've been involved with the wrong people and accidentally implicated ex special forces. They also beat up the owner of a garage, who tells them everything he knows. It turns out that Sohun works for a man named Jung Pilju, who often asks him to deliver goods. They don't know what his job is, but they know he has a lot of men and changes cars frequently. Soon after, Taejun said he wants to join Yohun when he goes to see Pilju, but Yohun insists that he stay behind to keep his wife safe. Shortly after, they arrive at Jung Pilju's headquarters, and Yohun takes on all the gangsters, fighting them on each floor. He's fast and fierce like an eagle, living up to his nickname. Then, they eventually find Jung Pilju, who is getting a massage from a female therapist. At that time, Yohun breaks down the door and beats him mercilessly. He demands to know if Jung Pilju ordered his brother's kidnapping and who the corrupt police officers are. Then, Jung Pilju admits that Gi Chol, the head of the general investigation team, is working with the gangsters. He also reveals that Sohun was initially meant to be a scapegoat, and that Gi Chol is the mastermind behind all the money laundering operations. After hearing that, Yohun beats him again until he gives them all the bank account and bookkeeping details they need. However, at first, Gi Chol denied everything, but the evidence was overwhelming which were photographs and financial notebooks. It turns out that a corrupt police officer caused a building worth 20 billion won to go bankrupt and be auctioned off. He used Pilju's gang to evict and terrorize the residents, but he wanted to control the money from the sale himself. Hearing that angered Gichol's group, and they killed the corrupt officer. To cover their tracks, they made Sohun the scapegoat, but Pilju was smart and had evidence of everything Gichol's group did in the apartment. 
It turned out that Gi Chol is cruel and greedy, and he will do anything for money. At that time, he scolds his subordinates for not realizing that So Hoon had an older brother. Then, he orders his subordinates to call the reporters and make Tae Joon and his wife the new suspects of the case. Elsewhere, Tae Joon sees the news and is furious because he and his wife are being framed for the murder of Captain Yong Ju. Knowing all of this, he doesn't know what to do. The next day, at the police station, Su Jin and Jong Su were packing up Captain Yong Ju's things. She was heartbroken over the loss of her captain when suddenly the phone rang. It was Tae Joon, and he had something important to tell Su Jin. He said he had evidence that proved they were not the ones responsible for the crime, and then shockingly, he turned himself in. Meanwhile, Yo Hoon had returned to the repair shop and was furious to learn that Tae Joon had gone to the police station alone. Then, Yo Hoon had a plan and all the evidence he needed to clear their names, but now he had to change it. At the police station, Tae Joon was being questioned by Soo Jin when she discovered that Captain Yong Ju's voice recorder had turned on during the murder. But just as they were making progress, Gi Chol walked in and kicked Soo Jin out of the room. However, Soo Jin had hidden a handcuff key in her mouth and discreetly spat it out before leaving. Then, Gi Chol told Tae Joon that he had no choice but to confess, as all the officers present were on his side. However, Tae Joon refused to comply, and Gi Chol threatened to harm his wife if he didn't reveal where Yo Hoon was hiding. As the tension mounted, Gi Chol received a picture message on his phone, warning him not to harm Tae Joon and his wife. It was from Yo Hoon, who told Gi Chol to leave and threatened him with the rest of the incriminating evidence. Meanwhile, in the evidence room, Su Jin discovered a voice recorder that revealed the shocking truth that Captain Yong Ju had been killed by Gi Chol and his corrupt subordinates. Hearing that, Su Jin was overcome with sadness and tears. As she left the evidence room, an alarm suddenly sounded, and all the officers were ordered to chase back Yo Hoon, whose location had been discovered. However, Su Jin refused to go, feeling that she still had work to do at the office. But it turned out that this was all part of Gi Chol's plan. He had given a false location for Yo Hoon in order to lure the officers away from the office, where his female subordinate began torturing Hee Ju. Meanwhile, Tae Joon managed to escape from the interrogation room and set off a bomb to distract the pursuing officers. At the same time, Hee Ju took the opportunity to flee to the bathroom, but was soon discovered and tortured. Just as the officers were ordered to return to the office, an explosion rocked the building, and the police station came under attack. Gi Chol was angry when he learned that Tae Joon had escaped, and he and his men launched an attack on Yo Hoon's car. Soon after, Yo Hoon instructed Tae Joon to find his wife while he closed the iron door and prepared to seek revenge. Meanwhile, Jong Su and the other officers discovered evidence that revealed Gi Chol to be the true mastermind behind the crimes they had been investigating. Elsewhere, Gi Chol's men started a fight with Yo Hoon, but he wasn't going to let them get away with their wicked ways. With each punch and kick, Yo Hoon took down the corrupt officers one by one, while Gi Chol aimed his rifle at him. Meanwhile, Hee Ju had a devious plan in the works. She lured Su Jin into the bathroom and tried to frame her for being unhappy in her marriage. At the same time, Hee Ju's husband Tae Joon was outside, desperate to find his wife. Fortunately, he noticed a decorative item he had given her earlier and used it to track her down. Then, Tae Joon bravely fought off Hee Ju and her accomplices to save his wife, but he was badly beaten. Thankfully, Su Jin arrived just in time to knock out Hee Ju and save the day. Exhausted and battered, the reunited couple were grateful to be together again. Back in another room, Gi Chol was feeling emotional and called out to Yo Hoon. He wanted to take him to meet his brother in the afterlife. Despite his injuries, Yo Hoon managed to get close to Gi Chol. Then, when Gi Chol asked for evidence of his wrongdoing, he started to panic. Meanwhile, outside, the other officers were angry and demanding to be let in. It was clear that their evil deeds had been exposed. But the special forces arrived just in time to turn the tables on the corrupt officers and bring them to justice. Soon after, the iron door creaked open. Then, the other officers stepped in to prevent Gi Chol from losing his life. He was a wild beast, filled with anger, but when he saw Tae Joon reunited with his wife, his fury dissipated. At th that time, Yo Hoon was apprehended and taken away, while Gi Chol was caught by Su Jin, who was just as angry and determined to bring him down. Finally, the tragic journey of these two very different people had come to an end, and Tae Joon looked at Yo Hoon with immense gratitude. Four years passed, and Yo Hoon finished serving his sentence. Sitting at a bus stop, he contemplated his uncertain future. Suddenly, a car pulled up and Tae Joon stepped out to pick him up. Tae Joon treated him like a little brother, and even took care of Gi Chol's brother, beloved dog. Suddenly, a beautiful little girl emerged from the car, the same person Yo Hoon had risked his life to save. So, those difficult days were now worth it, as she called him uncle. At that moment, Yo Hoon felt grateful and moved, realizing that he had saved more than just a life because he had saved a family. The film ends. The moral lesson of this film is if you're going to get involved in a complicated crime drama, make sure you have a good memory and take notes so you don't forget who's who and what's going on.